Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. This is a bonus episode for the week. Uh, I'm live here with uh, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, as always. Kind of a serious one this week. A lot of you have been asking about updates for our 2020 campaign for the new Hanover County School Board. Um, look, this is, uh, is going to be a, a difficult one today. Um, there's been a lot that's gone on here in the last six weeks that is some of the craziest shit that I've ever been a part of. And certainly it's hard to wrap your mind around the fact that this ha- would happen in your own community. You read about shit like this, but often you're like, oh, well, that's somebody else's city or town or whatever. That sucks, but it's actually ours this time. And uh, this one is going to involve our decision to step down from running mm. um, for New Hanover County School Board. And, and we'll get into those reasons. A, a lot of them have to do with legally what's going on. Um, to kind of catch you up to speed here, uh, when Dan and I decided to do this, <clears throat> um, we were all in. Uh, everybody was excited. We threw a huge campaign party. And Dan, you would always had an interesting take on this. You said that everybody in their life should serve some form of office. Yeah, I mean, you got to you have to do some kind of civil service whatever it happens to be. Military, you know, working for an, uh like the Peace Corps or a nonprofit or something like that or taking part in lo- local government is a good way to do it. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it, but you should find some way to serve, yeah. Yeah. And um you know, I I believe the same thing. Uh, Dan and I have been to every school board meeting. We've been a part of all of this uh, from the very beginning, starting with uh, last summer. Uh, Originally, it involved redistricting schools. And, you know, as pissed as I am because I live a mile away from each school, uh, there was some other things going on in the community that that we weren't really amped about. Um, There is a potential bus driver strike where they're taking away money. These guys were only making about $13 an hour. Um, and most of them have been in these jobs for 20, 30 years. Well, I mean, drivers. why would you want to treat the people who drive your children to and from school well? Yeah, yeah. It makes no sense to me. But anytime you see problems like that, there's always, uh, there's always other shit going on. I mean, it's like that's why community policing exists. So the idea of quality of life crimes, yep. uh, the broken window theory, mm-hmm. like if you take care of the lower level stuff, then typically it'll it's a trickle up kind of situation where people start respecting the neighborhood more and start doing stuff you know more ethically I guess if you want to call it that but it, it in reverse <clears throat> it's like where there's smoke there's fire where you see these small uh, encroachments into like reason and things working well and ethics in general like all the Homer bull or not Homer all the uh, <clears throat> good old boy small town politics bullshit yeah you know there's other stuff going on yeah and and to that point um i found it odd that they wouldn't give a i think it was a dollar 58 increase is what the per hour is what the the school bus drivers were asking for this this town is only what one hundred fifty thousand, jamie somewhere in that neighborhood um and it seemed odd the budget had a surplus of like three hundred thirty eight thousand dollars in it clearly they had more than enough to pay these teachers (laughs) But like Dan said, where there's smoke, there's fire. They were clearly <laughs> saving this money for something. Um, about, I would say, a month ago here at this point, um, the middle school that my child got redistricted for, um, a band teacher uh, was arrested on uh, 12 counts of um, sexual assault <clears throat> against children. Uh his name was uh, Peter, Peter Frank. Michael Frank, yeah, yeah. 47. And <clears throat> he had had sexual misconduct issues in the past. They are currently trying to dig through these right now and, and see what they are. He's in jail right now, uh, held without bond. But uh, there is 12 families that were <clears throat> devastated by this, yeah. and he- they are all bonding together for for some form of class action lawsuit and so here's the problem with this shit and this is so typical of any kind of government the the idea is like 
when you see something like this originally, you think, how could this ever happen here? And in the second part, you're like, wow, I'm glad we found this guy. There's probably more. How long has this been going on? Those are some typical questions to ask. This piece of shit was hired in 1997 mm-hmm. originally. And he was counseled by the district in 99 for like improper conduct towards children of some sort. To me, this is a one strike and you're out kind of situation. Especially like in the school system. If yeah. you're around children and you make one weird mistake or one weird whatever the fuck, if it's enough to bring you in for counseling, it's enough to fire your ass, period. Like this isn't like you said fuck in class or you went off curriculum or you told some kid to shut the fuck up because they were being an asshole. This is like being a predator, right? Yeah. So then in the warrant that was issued for him, it wasn't like he took a break and then came back to doing this weird shit. The charges for him all took place, the incidents all took place between 2003 and recently. Mm-hmm. Like it's been decades of this shit. Yeah. Two decades of this shit, basically, that he's been fucking, you know, try, I don't know what the fuck he's doing specifically. Yeah, that, that has not come to <clears throat> late yet. So I, we just know that these children were assaulted, sexually assaulted. Yeah. He's in prison without bail. Um, this has been going on for a while. Um, with that, uh, the parents rightfully stormed the school board meeting, which, again, we've been in attendance for every single one of these. Yeah. And um, they demanded that the superintendent uh, was to be fired and that the board of the entire school board was to be wiped out completely and, and fired. Uh, one of two things happened in that. Um, the superintendent resigned. He could have been fired. The school board decided to let him resign, which triggered a $50,000 bonus, bringing his salary to $226,000. And to me, that is unacceptable. Uh, their excuse was, you know, there's going to be a, uh, there, w- there would have been a lawsuit against it. We wanted to n- nip it in the bud, so to speak, before a lawsuit was filed. I, I'm assuming from the, the superintendent's side, although I doubt it. Um, if, if you're covering up for a, a pedophile, I don't see what court is going to do that. Now, they're saying it was court fees that would have totaled more than $50,000. That's possible. But who it gives a shit? Who gives a shit? It's the superintendent of your fucking school system. That's like that when uh, people are talking about the Richard Stace called Government Accountability Act or the VA or anything like that in general. They're like, well, it's, it's going to cost too much. Like, there's no amount of money that's too much to take care of children and veterans and various other groups of people. Who gives a fuck how much it costs? I agree. Like, bury this piece of shit under... Like, he should never get a job anywhere near managing people who are around children again because, obviously, he can't be trusted with that responsibility. Again... Because this stuff's been going on for fucking years and, now. And this is Superintendent Markley. Um, <clears throat> now, by the way, that $50,000 bonus he got, that would be about 30,000 hours additional at a dollar 58 per hour raise yeah which could have gone to the bus drivers yeah just saying could have gone to the bus drivers um shortly after that now this is three weeks ago so we're kind of bumping up the timeline here that was three weeks ago the superintendent resigned um the assistant superintendent resigned as well he is out of there the head of hr um for the the superintendent is gone as well at the school board and then Two members of the school board themselves, uh, one contacted me personally, said, I am no longer uh, running at all in this election, and I, I want to be off the school board. Uh, when I chatted with this person and said, why? These lawsuits are going to go on for the better part of the next three or four years. Um, <clears throat> the school was recently asked last week uh, for a loan uh, of the budget of another $353,000 to help with the legal fees that are going to incur from this. The biggest decision why, why we decided to drop out, by the way, there, there is two more pedophile cases that are up right now. Um, one where the guy was convicted to 18 <coughs> to uh, 26 years, and that lawsuit's going to go first next summer, and that's uh, 26 families that are involved in that. There's this one the about the band teacher that we talked about, uh, Mr. Frank. Yeah, now there's a guy, William Graham. Yeah, who pulled out his dick. He's a substitute teacher, pulled out his dick in a class and pissed in front of a cup in front of um, some some high school students. 
about three days ago. Um, this is going to get worse. And our biggest decision deciding him not to run is is kind of twofold here. One, I don't know what anyone can get done in the next three to four years until these lawsuits are cleared out. Mm. Um, because whoever is coming in on the school board in November, you know, and it's the same election as Trump and, and everything else, it'll be on the same card. You're going to have to deal with this, and your name and picture is going to be associated with endless lawsuits for pedophiles for the next three to four years. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to, as a father, especially as a father of a child who's would be going to this school, I, I don't know how to explain that to him. Yet, it, c- clearly, I'm going to have to talk about pedophiles and, and what's wrong and, and what's right um, as far as appropriate behavior around adults at some point. Um, I was not prepared to have this now. And I'm not sure while these lawsuits go on, especially these trials, and a lot of these kids are older from the first one now um, because some of these charges were back from 2004 that are going to be testifying. I'm not sure that I want to have the conversation and or attempt to have the conversation of why their father is pictured in the paper with all of these pedophile teachers over and over again just because I'm on the school board. Um, it has nothing to do with me, obviously, but how do you disassociate one thing yeah. with another while this is going on for the next three to four years? Yeah, I mean, that is what it is. That's that's kind of a shitty situation, and I don't, I don't really want to be involved with it either, but the bigger problem for me is that being on the school board, you don't have enough authority to really, like, I would want to go full Joe McCarthy on these people. Like, honestly, yes. fuck your goddamn union. Fuck your reps. Fuck your contracts. Mm -hmm. We're going to start doing in-depth background checks on everybody that currently works in here. And I'm going to put a box in every school for students to report shit that's happening or some kind of form online. And if you get brought into this stuff, a full investigation happens. It's not like there's no there's no there's no line that's too far to go to protect kids, in my opinion. Like, I I, I, I agree. And and to be honest, These people, I'm a staunch advocate of if you are convicted of fucking with kids, you should get killed immediately. Like there's no, I don't, I don't know what the recidivism rate is. Honestly, I don't really care. Like you get one chance. You you fuck with a kid, you die, period. It should be instant execution. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't know. I I feel like Bert Coons is always talking about um, party like it's. 1852 or whatever the fuck yeah stuff like that and he gets heat for it he's like sometimes people will dm like what do you want women not to vote again you want black people to be sick no he wants society to go back to a point where ethics were enforced by every single person in the community like if you saw somebody like it used to be even in the 1950s if you saw somebody fucking with a kid you just beat their ass in the fucking street you know what i mean Mm mm-hmm that's where that's the kind of country I want to live in. Same. Where I mean, it ta- it does take a village to raise a child, and the 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 point of that is is that everything a kid interacts with growing up affects their life in some kind of way, and we teach them with our fucking with our naivety, like forced naivety, because you have to be you have to suspend your disbelief sometimes. For how shitty the world is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and our complacence in dealing with stuff. Like when when somebody like uh, Weinstein comes along mm-hmm. and in the beginning people are defending him, that's problematic. Because, look, everybody's entitled to the presumption of innocence. But when there's like 90 people saying you raped them, like, come on, man. Uh, we have a responsibility as a community not to, not to prejudge people or to judge quickly but to judge and then fuck them up if they did the wrong shit. So that's, I like, I like that attitude where not mob justice, street justice, essentially not, yeah. not mob justice, but street yeah. justice for sure. Yeah. Like if somebody's running off at the mouth or something like that, just pop them one time. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to get any more serious than that. Yeah. Uh, and particularly if somebody's fucking with a kid though, like I feel like, I don't understand why this, this, so you know what Megan's law is, right? Mm-hmm. In Florida? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, <clears throat> basically, what happened was a guy had raped some children, went to jail for like 18 months. I think it was 18 months. Then he moved to his mom's house in northern Georgia, and he was traveling back to Florida to prey on children again, and he killed that girl and buried her in his, in his mom's yard. Yeah. So they tried to pass laws down there that make sentencing tougher uh, for convicted sex uh, uh, offenders and, and our registered sex offenders, all this other bullshit. A lot of stuff came out of that, but it's still... Like, you can, you can straight up rape a child and spend a couple of years in jail mm-hmm. and be back out. And all, you, legal, all you're legally required to do is tell people in your neighborhood that you're a sex offender. Registered sex offender, yeah. Yeah. Why? Why does that person still exist? I don't know. And, uh, again, this is the third or fourth case of this happening. And this is going to get drug out for a long time. And, and some of you might be asking, well why not you guys help clean up the problem and fix it? The problem is this. When you have multiple cases that are going on, and look, I've been through my fair share of lawsuits uh, for all these movies and all this shit. Usually it's cash grabs and it's fucking poor people trying to extort you for something, Um, which is fine. Like uh, That comes with the territory, comes with the business. It is what it is. Um, In this instance, though, um, having gone through all these lawsuits and knowing how long the legal process takes, I can tell you in a, it's just a simple suit for a movie. These things get drug out three years. Yeah. Um, I'm in a, two or three <clears throat> of them now, and it's, it's years, years and years and years. This is way, way more <clears throat> complex and complicated. And I, you know, when we, when we talked to our lawyers, they said, look, man, these might not even be wrapped up by the time you guys get out of your first term. Uh, no, there's no way they would be. I mean... <clears throat> What will likely happen, and for the school board, I, I would assume they would hope it would go down like this, but what will likely happen is that the, they'll file a class action lawsuit, mm-hmm. and everybody involved will join onto it, and then there'll be one decision and one lump, lump settlement. Yeah, so, th- so that's what they, they've tried to do in the first suit. Mm-hmm. Um, allegedly, there's insurance money there that is offered every <laughs> child a million dollars. The parents are asking for way more than that. And by the way, we fully side with the parents on this. Sue for every last fucking dollar you can. Yeah. Um, uh, because they, they, want, they also want to open up these records and make the school board accountable for hiring teachers with past offenses. Yeah. And that's another <clears throat> thing they're asking for. Um, there is some form of immunity that is granted by the school board that they don't, it precludes them from having to talk about why they did this or why this guy was hired in the first place. I also think that's shitty. I personally know the law firm, and they're trying to break this. This is a special case where you might be able to. And, uh, again, this is going to stretch out for three to four years at a minimum. I don't even know about the other two teachers who just got popped for this, Jamie, but um, uh, because they're, they're, they're currently in jail right now awaiting sentencing and, and all that other stuff. But we wouldn't be able to get anything done at all. Uh, and, and I also don't want our name associated with pedophiles over and over and over again for the millions of news stories that this is going to pop up in. And, uh, man, to be honest, man, I moved from Los Angeles to here um, because I wanted to raise my children in a, great, in a great town with great public schools. And I did not want them to be barricaded behind the gates of a private school in L.A. Yeah. for thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. Like, I, I strongly believe in that. Well, that's another thing that's going to happen as a result of this. Like, the New Hanover County school system is going to get fucking destroyed over this. Yes. Um, the schools are going to go way downhill mm-hmm. because of this shit. Because, uh, yeah, insurance will cover a certain portion of the, the legal fees and all that bullshit, but... Uh, it's going to cut deep into their budget. Yeah, there, there is a big portion that it's not. And we're already having problems with bus drivers and everything else. I, I know they're trying to sell the, the hospital in this town. There's one hospital here. Um, they are currently trying to sell it, allegedly for uh, about a billion dollars. And most of that money is supposed to go toward education, and building a new schools. Problem is, when you have all of these lawsuits like this, and the budget is not going to cover them, they're, they're going to dip into that money as well. And to me, I don't agree with them selling the hospital for education in this case. 
because most of this money is going to go to cover these lawsuits and everything else. And, and again, the parents fucking deserve it. Yeah. It is a no-win situation that we're involved in here. And I've never been a part of something like this. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's like uh, you, you don't want to see the entire school system collapse like that. But, you know, people get nostalgic about a lot of stuff. Like if you have maybe it's the home you grew up in as a child, but the fucking foundation is rotting. You got to mm-hmm. burn that bitch down and start over. And sometimes that is the unfortunate reality of life. And um, the things that we wanted to address will become unaddressable or inaddressable, I don't know if that's, I don't know which one it is. Yeah. Either way, it'll become problematic for us to get anything done because everything's going to get uprooted or they're going to try to put a big Band-Aid on it, which is even worse. Yeah, and I think there is a lot more. I know you, you've said that. I think there is a lot more coming that we don't know about. And you know, right now we're in the primaries uh, or heading towards them. And this was a decision that we sat with because you know we wanted more facts first. Uh, I also wanted to talk to the parents' lawyers which I did. Um, they were gracious enough to talk about it. Obviously, I didn't get into their kids and everything else, but I asked what they were going after and why and, and blah, blah, blah. And uh, uh, I'd worked with one firm before on, on, uh, on another case, and um, they were kind enough to give me the information. I'm not going to say which one and, and bury them because um, there is three separate class action lawsuits that are currently either taking place or about to take place and uh, with, with a couple different firms. Um, what I can tell you is this is, you know, I know personally a couple members from the school board are not running again for reelection. Um, I'd love to tell you it was us, uh, but this, this one, I, I genuinely don't think so. Um, I'm a couple of the ones at the last emergency uh, hearing here mm-hmm. after this parent storm, the school board refused to be pictured in the picture. So, <laughs> Uh, I, I I understand it, and yeah, I don't, you know I don't blame him. Uh, so that's kind of what we've been dealing with here over the last couple months. It's hard until you have all the facts and and you see what's in front of you. Um, with the, the the first one was the the first teacher getting convicted, so he is serving a minimum of eighteen years. Uh, these those are the first round of lawsuits that will start next, and then the other guy just got arrested. Uh, what was it two weeks ago, Jamie? Three weeks ago. Yeah, and then there was one 18 months ago, and he actually just died in jail. So that's not going to trial. He died in jail of what? Stab wounds? I or? hope. They said it was kidney failure, but I doubt it. Maybe yeah, he got stabbed they're, in they're kidney a bunch kidney of times. They're saying kidney failure, but hopefully he got stabbed and uh, raped. A, yeah, a I really, times, I really yeah. just can't wish death more on someone who Pedophiles. fucks with children, yeah. honestly. I, I, I'm not trying to be... Uh, shocking or even crass or anything i honestly believe that if you fuck with children you should get executed on the spot i agree like right there just kill that person because it's systemic that there's something about uh that situation that kids who get molested when they're young are so much more likely to carry that behavior into their future as well and yeah that sucks but I mean, if cancer was a person that would suck to just walk up and kill them, maybe cancer is just cancer and that's how it is. Mm-hmm. But you got to cut that shit the fuck out. It doesn't matter if it's rude or inconvenient or even savage or brutal. That's just how life is. If somebody is a part of your society and they're preying on someone to such a degree that, if, that it affects generations down the road, you have to fucking pull that weed out and maybe light it on fire in the public square. Like a brutal death would be great. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as of now, uh, we, we've pulled our candidacy and, we, and we're no longer running. Um, to the people that are, I know there's a couple teachers, actual teachers in the school system who are fed up with what's going on and they are running. Um, as soon as this primary is over here in a few weeks, uh, we'll get you the info for them um, and, and kind of champion them, champion them a little more. Because... You know, at this point, with everything that's going on inside the school system, it might be best that there is actual teachers who are in the school system mm. uh, leading the charge as far as cleaning up our schools. Because let's face it, they they know what's going on inside their schools, and I'm sure they have numerous meetings and dinners and you know cocktails after work and all that stuff to discuss it. So I'm I'm positive this news is probably not shocking to them. Yeah. It is to me. As a parent, but uh, 
look, I'm not even sure that I want to live in this community anymore. Um, so we'll see. Um, in the meantime, uh, thank you for all the support and, and all the questions and everything. But uh, that is kind of what we've been going through here for the last six to seven weeks. And um, it was a decision that I, I, I we personally were sad about. And like, uh, I was actually, I, I'm, I really wanted to run, and mm-hmm. I really want to run for an office one day. Um, Dan, I know you mentioned throughout this process, you're like, all right, now that you're in it and you get to just kind of see behind the, the curtain a little bit, like you want to be mayor someday of a well, city. Well, I mean, you know, I, I could be, whether I want to be or not. It would be a huge pain in the ass to do it. Yeah. But it would also be an interesting experience. And uh, I think one of the good things about me is I don't really give a shit about anybody's feelings or any of that stuff. Or party alignment. Or any of that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me... um, Because even the school board, it was Republicans and Democrats, which is fucking retarded. It's it's weird to me. Yeah, and anybody listens to the show, look, you know I'm all the way Trump on all this shit, but like in a school system where, you know, you're looking after kids up until they're 18 years old, like they can't even vote for this shit. Why why is there politics on any school board? It should just be about the kids. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same way about government in general. Like it's a convenient, calling yourself... Republican or Democrat or Libertarian or Green or whatever the case is, is a convenient way to align yourself with people who think like you. Mm -hmm. But it's also, in my opinion, it's a trap. So you, when you label yourself like that, you basically give people a checklist like, oh, you believe in these things? Well, well, I believe in some of them. Yeah. So why not just like, why don't we start an American party where we all believe in whatever the fuck we believe in? You know what I mean? And then we find the best answer. Like, there's no... I used to troll people all the time on in the Drinking Bros group and then on social media in general. And I would be like, hey, we're all going to be democratic socialists now, right? Because Bernie was just getting popular in 2015. And I was just curious to see if anybody even knew what the fuck that meant. Right. No one, even today, people don't know what it means. You know what's funny, man? I, I actually want to talk <laughs> longer about this after the sponsors because... There was some interesting clips that I saw over the weekend about Bernie. Yeah. I want to get your take on him now that Ugh. he is the front runner. And uh, I, I, it, this is exactly what you're talking about right now. Let me, I, I don't know how long we were talking, uh, but we'll, we'll get to the sponsors first and then we'll get into that. Um, again, this is a bonus show, an emergency show today um, to kind of keep you guys updated. First and foremost is ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Everything's 25% off at Ghostbed. Mattresses, sheets, pillows, adjustable bases, you name it. And that deal is applicable with the 36-month pay-as-you-go program. No interest. Everything at GhostBed up until March 3rd. Super Tuesday is uh, 25% off. Best in the biz over at GhostBed.com forward slash drinking bros. 25% off of everything. Uh, Next up, we got... ExpressVPN.com forward slash drinking bros. Protect your digital butthole, people. Protect it. It is on the line right now. Um, look, they saved us, man. We got we get fucking hacked. Yeah. And they stopped <clears throat> it. Yep. They saved us. Um, I got so if, if you listen to the Ross Patterson Revolution show, Dan Dan was on it because I called him. Uh, our drinking bros credit card was actually stolen and somebody charged five bucks for a Hil- the Hillary Clinton campaign. I'm pretty sure it was a friend of ours. It had to be. It had to be. Because that's too specific. Yeah. It, it's too specific, and it was only on the Drinker Bros podcast yeah. credit card. But my ca- my uh, individual card, my personal card, got compromised as well. Yeah. And it was not a funny thing. No. I mean, it was stupid. It was, it, they didn't end up spending that much money because of, like, I'm protected digitally. Like, they couldn't do anything like that. They could only use the card to do certain stuff. So it was like five, ten bucks here and there. Yeah. It's like little penny ante bullshit. But um And yeah. even then it got shut down and uh look, yeah. that's the importance of having uh, a seamless app that runs in the background of all your computers and all that shit. Like it could have been worse, man, than five bucks. It got reported and boom. Got a phone call and that was that. Uh go to expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros today and uh and get this fucking app, man. It's it's <laughs> Cryptically, it helps people from hacking all your shit, man, getting away with it. Um, luckily, ours is only 10 15 bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't give a shit, but thank you, expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Seven bucks a month. Um, if you're a member of Drinking Bros and you use that URL, you get three months for free. 
and uh, it works in iPhones, uh, laptops, desktops, and it also beats the firewall at work if you're not allowed to watch certain uh, abhorrent sites um, or ESPN and shit like that. It helps with. Um, so go to expressvpn.com uh, forward slash drinking bros today. Last but not least, we got boxofawesome.com. Uh, that's a promo code drinking bros there. Um, that's 15% off. And they're just making you the dopest shit on the planet. Yeah, you answer a little questionnaire. It's five questions. Boom. That's it. Um, and that tells you what kind of man you are. And they ship shit to your house based on who you are. It's a sexy little box that just gets delivered to you right to your doorstep. And you can get fucking. There was a hatchet in there the other day. A goddamn hatchet. Yeah, you just pull that out and throw it at the nearest pedophile. It was fucking awesome. Um, they got everything. Uh, Dop kits. Uh, shit for cooking. They got uh, barware, glassware, you name it, man. Um, High end shit for a low, low price, dude, of 45 bucks. It's like Christmas every single month, man. Uh, get the subscription. When it shows up to your house, it is the best day um, of the month. I can promise you that. Go to boxofawesome.com. Promo code drinking bros, 20% off your first box. Uh, D'Anthony's, I want to talk about the, the Bernie Sanders thing. <clears throat> This is an emergency episode. We're dropping it at like 15 minutes after we record it. Bernie steamrolled uh, through Nevada. Yep. Kind ne- of a shocker. Nevada. Nevada. I, I say Nevada. Locals will chide you for well, saying it that way. It's classier. I want to make it sound classier. It's not classier. Nevada. It's doing things the wrong way is not classier. No, it is. It is. Spicing them up it's, uh, is always helpful. Um, Bernie runs away with it, right? Um, a, a lot of people... Pundits, talking heads, uh, Chuck Todd, because he's separate, sleepy Chuck Todd. Yeah. Um, he is a tired guy. And look, I was listening to uh, Ben Shapiro on Monday morning as well uh, on the drive, and everybody's saying the same thing. Bernie is probably your winner of the yeah. Democratic Party right now. Well, we'll see. There's a lot of time left. And I don't mean because I don't think he has the support. I mean because the DNC is going to have something to say about that. Yeah. Uh, well, because he, so here's the thing. Like when... The Democratic establishment fucking hates him. Yeah, generally speaking, they hate him by for a way. number of reasons. One, he is almost assuredly unelectable on the national level. Like they they don't believe right or wrong. I think they're right. I don't think he can get elected either. But I, I, I'm with you. Uh, right or wrong, the DNC believes that. So if you're the DNC, you kind of have to stop him somehow. And like you, and you see it the day after he wins Nevada. CNN, the entire front page, mm-hmm. the the above the fold section for CNN is all stuff about how Bernie should not be elected. Yes, and, and then by the way, so is Sleepy Chuck Todd. All those guys, AM Joy, every, everybody else, saying how bad Bernie is for the party. Um, you know that the party has now become Democratic Socialist, which will never get elected. I think they're probably right on mm-hmm. that, and they're worried now. They're really fucking worried. That's one. Well, he's two. just going to self-sabotage the whole time. Well, that, and that's funny you say this. This was two. He gets on after seeing all this press and says, fuck the, fuck the Republican Party. Fuck the Democrat Party. Um, this is the new revolution. This is what we're doing. Yeah. And you can't <clears throat> stop us anymore. When you tell your own party to fuck off. Well, it's not his party, though. He was independent for years. Yeah. So explain this to the audience um, who might not know. He was a Democrat back in the day. And then after becoming, uh, look, when he was coming up, when, when Bernie Sanders was, a, was new in politics. Was like, it 1890? Yeah, <clears throat> in the 60s. Yep. Uh, the Democratic Party was still the party of the KKK, like Robert Byrd and people like that, mm-hmm. right? Like these old school white racists. That's what the Democratic Party was back then. Um, and the Republican Party was not. They were, I mean, there they were like Strom Thurmond, people forget this. This wasn't that long ago. Strom Thurmond in 1948 ran on the segregationist party as yeah. for president of the yeah. United States. Yeah. Uh, by the way, served in the Senate until he was like 100 years old. Uh, it was the craziest shit of all yeah. time. Was he South Carolina? Yeah. yeah, South Carolina. He's actually, so the church that I grew up in, he was a member there. And uh, his name, they have like a plaque for him in the front of the, like right when you walk in, there's his name. Like, oh, fucking special Senator Strom Thurmond. Like, wow, he's uh, racist as shit. Yeah. Uh, at any rate, <clears throat> When Bernie was coming up, the Democratic Party wasn't exactly revolutionary. You know what I mean? Like they were a little, it was the Southern, the Dixiecrats. Yeah. They were often referred to as, and uh, things have changed, obviously, over the years. They've become super woke. 
or whatever. Yeah. But he, he, he caucused with Democrats, which means when there was a big debate on something or whatever the fuck or the whip, if you don't know what that is, that's the member of Congress. It's kind of like the deputy, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, sp- either speaker or uh, majority or minority leader, depending on which how- or which party's in charge. Um, <clears throat> and their job is to count the votes. So if you're debating a particular issue, the whip will go in to all the chambers and, uh, and offices and be like, hey, I got your vote right for this thing. And they'll just count. And then they'll, that's how when, when you see something in the press like, well, we don't think they have the votes for that, they know for a fact they don't have the votes. Right. Or they do have the votes because they go and face-to-face talk to these people, and that's the whip's job. Um, <clears throat> so he caucused with Democrats for years because he was closer aligned with them. But he ran as an independent that whole time. Right, and he won. He won frequently, yeah. And yeah. He, another thing he didn't do, well, one of the reasons he ran as an independent, honestly, I think, is because the the left got so anti-gun in the 90s, and his people like guns Yeah, up there. In so, Vermont. yeah. Like, since he's become a presidential candidate, he's his rating with the NRA has gone way down, obviously. But back in the day, it was like a B. Yeah. Still pretty good. Yeah. Uh, although he was part of the fucking... Brady Bill Law in 97 and the assault weapons ban and all this shit. At any rate, uh, so he caucused with Democrats for years, but he's been an independent. And that's what made a lot of Democrats in 2016 butthurt about him. Because one of the big problems they have in, in, in the Democratic Party is that uh, the major leaders don't really raise money and, and champion down ballot candidates, which that's like building your bench, you know, if you're thinking about it as a franchise. And uh, Obama's bad about it. Like, he, he didn't even support Joe Biden, for Christ's sake. Um, Still hasn't. No. Um, neither yeah. is Hillary, by the way. Neither <laughs> no, of, neither of no, she's never done have either. endorsed either of these, any of these candidates at all. No, and then there's, you know, uh, for him, that's, that was one of the chief complaints about him. Like, he's been milking off the Democratic Party's base for years, but he's never actually contributed to the party. Now he's the front runner. Like, that sucks. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the reasons the DNC shit canned him in fucking 2016. Um, now, I don't know what their option is now. I don't either. And, and that's kind of what I want to chat about. So he goes on Anderson Cooper on 60 Minutes on Sunday night. Um, Anderson Cooper said, look, I, even the media, the left, the far left media is going all in on Bernie Sanders. That fucking 60 Minutes interview with Anderson Cooper was ruthless. He said, look, man, I want to talk about Castro because in 1982, you praised Fidel Castro. Mm-hmm. And he doubled down on that. Uh, which was very, very surprising. The last thing you want to hear after a guy is starting to run away with uh, the, the, the Democratic primaries is, hey, man, you know who is awesome? Castro. Um, so he doubled down on that. Uh, and then Anderson Cooper challenged his record li- live on air, which was surprising to me. He said, look, man. Why is it surprising? The CNN is woke left, but they're still establishment Democrat. Yeah, I, it, it, here's why it's surprising. That is your front runner. That is your leader. To go that hard after him. Um, yeah, but it's is, not over. Well, here's why it's surprising. It, you, you take Pelosi, right, going mm-hmm. after the impeachment. You know that was going to take down Biden. That yeah. was probably your most electable candidate, but you did it anyways. With Bernie Sanders, now I think he's going to lose to Trump. But I think the numbers are going <laughs> to be closer than any other candidate that runs against Trump. I'm not 100% sure Bernie's going to get the uh, nomination. How are they going to stop him at this point? Well, the DNC is a private organization, so they can, on the floor, decide, the leadership can decide to change the rules and just pick somebody. They can do whatever the fuck they want. And do you think that's going to happen? Maybe. I mean, they could go into, this This is legitimate. This could happen. They could have a, a broker convention. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> pretty much what happens is the leadership of the DNC will walk around basically like they're caucusing, like the whip is walking around for the DNC and saying, we are not going to let Bernie Sanders get this nomination. So pick whoever else you want, and that's who's going to be our candidate. Here's who we prefer you pick. And if you pick these people, we'll spend some money on your next campaign. That's pretty much how that works. Uh, I can't imagine, if I'm the Democratic uh, Party right now, there's no way you can let Bernie Sanders win. Because if you do... Well, for, I mean, people don't even know what democratic socialism is, first of all. Right. Like, it's, it's not 
it's not technically socialism, but it's a socialist free market. It's very, very close. It's 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 pretty close. Like they want the government to have pretty much free control to to govern the market however they want. Right. And I think some government control over the market is necessary. Like we should be. It's it's funny the things when we bring up these examples of uh, against. Uh, unadulterated free market capitalism it's usually like well we don't want pharmaceutical industry to go crazy and start charging people crazy amounts for pills well that's exactly what we let happen yes so basically <clears throat> government control typically just the, the our worst nightmares come to fruition and the stuff that we actually expect it never happens that's typically how it goes at any rate uh <clears throat> uh the idea of 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 a socialist free market means that, yeah, we're going to let the free market go. We're just going to interfere where we s- see fit. Mm-hmm. That's that's the party line. But that's like, come on, man. Any Anybody you give control to like that is going to abuse it at some point. It's not about you. So when, uh, <clears throat> when you pass a law like the Patriot Act, for example, maybe things are really bad at the time and maybe you need more authority to be able to do stuff and blah, 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 but... It's not about you. It's not about you because even if you're a hundred percent altruistic, the next guy that comes along might not be. And you can build on a law like that and turn our government into a fucking tyranny. Like you could do that yeah. with the Patriot Act easily. And they've done it to some degree. Like you can you, you get now with Google and Facebook collecting the amount of data that they do, uh <clears throat> and with like the fact that Google and Facebook are not paying federal income tax because of the laws that the federal government are passing. You don't think there's a fucking quid pro quo there? Get fucked. Oh, yeah. Boy. yeah. All of your fucking information is getting... Like, look, with Echelon back in the day, the NSA was capturing every single phone call that came in and out of this country and inside the country. So there were, there was like football fields of servers near Fort Meade, Maryland and shit like that. Like, this is all public information now, but um, they just didn't have the technology to process all that stuff now. Now with voice recognition and keyword searches and stuff like that, they can fucking spy on you all they want. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. And now yeah. Google and Facebook's made that easier. So you're telling me that the government in bed with business is a good idea. No, it's not. Like those are two separate entities. The government's job is to make sure we have a military, secure borders, health care, streets, things like that. That's what the government's job is. It's not to tell us how the market should work. Like the idea that there's a Fed chairman that sets interest rates for the country? You fucking kidding me? Like yeah. that's crazy. Why yeah. would why would some government employee be in charge of that? That's like why? What, yeah. what fucking? How does that make sense? But again, it it betrays the fact that our. I, I think it's a sense of it's a psychological sense of oh there is somebody there to to fix the rate if if you know yeah <laughs> where it's like eh, is it or is it more the president? Because look, I know Trump has leaned on this uh, the Fed's the Fed guy for um, you know interest rates and things like that. Of like, hey man, you need to let the stock market breathe and things like that. Yeah. He's been correct so far, um, but uh, most of these jobs are they just there as like psychological? Like, eh, are they really fucking <clears throat> doing anything? Well, I don't know. The vice president doesn't actually do anything either. Nothing. Uh, Nothing. Then, that's that's couple hundred grand yeah, yeah, yeah. spend on something. You can asshole. watch Veep on HBO if you want to find out yeah. about that. That's a great show, it's by the way. As realistic as it um, gets. Um, yeah, it just doesn't uh like there's a there's a million different types of socialism, but there's only one, honestly. And it's never worked. I don't know why people think it's gonna work. I the idea behind it is sound. So the idea behind economic socialism is that the point of the government is to take care of people. And and this is very rudimentary, but the point of the government is to take care of people. And it's not meant to be a for-profit business. It's meant to operate as a nonprofit, right? Like every single cent that comes into the government should go out to the people. Right. And that's what we depend on. So with the layers and layers of bureaucracy over the years, obviously that's become impossible. And you can see that in 501c3s here too. Like only there, – there are some instances where you only have to spend 2% of your fucking operating income on the actual charity and the rest can go to administrative fees. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have gotten in trouble for that over the years, like Wounded Warrior Project, for example, for doing fucked up bullshit like that. So I heard they've cleaned up, by the way. Can you confirm or deny? uh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, they should have just scrapped it and changed the name, to be honest. 
because it's it's forever tainted when you when you when, when an issue like veteran shit yeah of course when you do something like that it's just I, I think they should scrap and start over but anyways the idea behind it is sound and I agree with that idea I agree with the idea that government is here to protect us and to take care of us um, in mass for things that are provided in mass like national security is provided in mass we need that as a collective group there's no way to do that individually we need the interstate highway system we need shit like that right homeland security to a degree um and there are some things in our financial institutions that require a bigger lift than we're able to do on our own uh but (laughs) the idea that uh the government should just be able to intrude into economics whenever they feel like it the idea behind that is that the government the the only way it works is the government is truly altruistic like if it was a robot government and they were like, well, we've done the calculations. This is the best. But yeah. it's not like that. It's no. a bunch of people from districts where they have to go back, explain their position, then get, to get reelected. Yep. And so they're all not – they're not – the point of goddamn representative government isn't for – like people yell at somebody, a congressman or a senator, like your state's fucked up or your city's fucked up. That's not their job. Their job is to take the will of the people mm-hmm. from their district to D.C. and get things done. Right. That's yep. their job. Yep. It's, it's not to they're not the fucking mayor of their district. That's not how it works. Right. Um, so <clears throat> and the pro- by the way, the, the problem with this, with a lot of these states and cities and all this shit with these either representatives or senators come from is you take a state like California. There's so many people coming in and out of that state that are unaccounted for. Yeah. That it's eating up so much money and it's hard to sit down at the end of the year going, all right. Well, I don't understand where the fucking budget is going. Look, I lived there for 18 years. Every year they teetered on bankruptcy up until midnight, and then something got passed, you know? Some magical thing by Schwarzenegger. It was usually Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Um, But essentially what you're doing is you're introducing uh, not necessarily dollar bills, but a profit motive to government. Mm -hmm. So the congressperson or the senator has a motive to get their agenda passed, not the best agenda, their agenda, to make sure they get reelected. Government's become all about self-propagation it's not about the will of the people anymore and maybe that's just what happens when it reaches critical mass when there's too many people being governed by one set of laws maybe that just happens i don't know yeah um but because we've never seen a government this large be run in any kind of efficient way ever no and and look and to to the point of the democrats you know there's never been a socialist um that is won an actual primary for the president of the United States. No. Well, I mean, there's been... Uh, so FDR was not socialist. He was actually a pretty, for the most part, a conservative, like classical liberal yeah. guy. But the programs he introduced were based in socialist ideology. So Social Security care. Social Security, Medicare, Medicare yeah. uh, the, the fucking GI Bill, mm-hmm. all that shit, are basically tenets of socialism. That's That's where... It's like these people with these diets. Like, they find out that ketones help your body fucking burn fat. So, like, oh, I'm going on an all-ketone diet. I'm going to go into ketosis. Like, that's fucking stupid. That is so... It's like you take... It's just being myopic and and narrow-minded and getting tunnel vision. You see one thing that kind of works. Like, oh, we should do this for everything. That's not how fucking life works. And it's lazy and it's stupid. And that's just who we are as people in America. Yeah. Like we prefer our hot pockets to freshly cooked meals these days. And that's why we're all a bunch of fat retards, to be honest. So I don't know why we expect more out of our government. Everybody's sitting at home, like fucking eating food off their fucking stomach like an otter. Right. (laughs) Flipping through, (laughs) keeping up with the Kardashians. I don't know why the government can't get their shit straight. It's because of you, asshole. That's why. (laughs) Motherfucker. Well, look, tonight uh, is the is the next debate. Um, some people are calling it the last chance. Um, Rahm Emanuel issued, issued a dire warning. I know everybody else has to. Is sounding the alarm against. Uh, we've got to do something to stop Bernie before it's too late. Um, you essentially have one week left. Uh, the interesting part about tonight's debate is this: because last week Bloomberg hopped in mm-hmm. and hopped on stage. It broke every record there was. 35.5 million people tuned in. Uh, now this is going to be on CBS tonight. Same thing with Bloomberg. Bloomberg's going to be out for revenge, one. Yeah. Two, there is a rumor that all the candidates have gotten together, except for Bernie, and said, hey, we need to go scorched earth against 
socialism tonight, and everybody's got to do their fucking well, how's that gonna how's that going to sit with Elizabeth Warren, though? Because she's like a cunt hair away from socialism. It, she's not in it, and uh, to that point, there is a new poll that got released mm-hmm. that said, and, and I don't, by the way, I don't believe any of these fucking polls, especially after the last election, but the new poll said, if Bernie ran with Warren, they're predicting them at a 48, 45 win over Trump, which I think is fucking ludicrous. That's retarded, yeah. Um, but uh, I'll she, take that bet. She's close, and I think she'll keep quiet tonight, but the rest of them are going ham. Problem is, though, you still have Bloomberg out there who's now <clears throat> doubling down on spending. Um, and his next round of ads, it says, that, it, that just got released today, are going to go after socialism in particular as a scare tactic. All of this couldn't play out better for Trump, but do you agree with them that there's only one week left? Because, look, you get through Super Tuesday. That's it, man. I, I'm, I'm kind of with them in this camp. Of, they have yeah, to. It is. Uh, got one week left. They've got to get. I mean, honestly, Bloomberg in is good and bad. I mean, it's going to draw focus, which is good. And he's going to spend a lot of money, which is when I say good, I mean good for the DNC. Right. Um, but is Bloomberg somebody that they want in office? I mean, he's old and white and rich, mm-hmm. so that's three check marks for the. All Democratic of them party. are, by the way. Yeah, uh, yeah. As much as they want to say they're not, they they, they all are. They're all yeah. old, white, and rich. Every yeah. single one of these fucking people. Uh, so those are good points for any political candidate. If you're old, white, and rich, you have a better shot than anybody else. And if you don't believe me, then look at the last Infinity president, except for one. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there have actually been some poor presidents, but anyways, uh, <clears throat> like Thomas Jefferson was severely in debt. And died severely in debt. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, I think it's good for the party in a lot of ways. It's bad that it, he's not like he's rich and and doesn't mind talking shit. But uh, we'll see what happens after Super Tuesday. It would be better for the party if there was one clear choice on the establishment side and one clear choice, and they could juxtapose just those two people. Because if you go into the problem is that Bernie bros, Bernie fans are so into him that they're going to vote for him no matter what. Like, they've already made their minds up. Yeah. And there are still a lot of people deciding between Buttigieg and Klobuchar and probably even Bloomberg. So uh, as Super Tuesday happens, Bernie people are going to vote for Bernie. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of the vote is going to get split amongst these other people. So Bernie's probably going to win. That's just how it is. Yeah. So it's not great for them. I mean, the only hope they really have is that somebody else does enough to cause a, a broker convention. Mm-hmm. That's that's what the DNC is hoping for, I I would assume. Um, and to be honest, <clears throat> Bloomberg is probably the Democrat that has the best chance of winning because he's right on. Maybe. <laughs> like Democrats in general will swallow their pride and vote for whomever probably except for the Bernie people, which is gonna, that'll be a whole other issue if he doesn't get nominated. But, uh, all the stuff about his criminal justice reform and all that bullshit, they'll forget about that. Yeah. The problem for him is I think he and Trump are actually friends. They are. And I think when they're on stage talking shit about each other, I guarantee you there's a phone call after where they're talking about what they just said and shit like that. Or, or maybe down the road that'll happen, like three months after the election, or like, yeah, Trump will be like, hey, remember when you called me a fucking turd? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah that's pretty funny, right? Yeah. I think I honestly think they're friends, and I think if you saw them on a debate stage together, it would be more like two frat guys roasting each other than it would be like two political candidates attacking each other. Oh, 100 percent. So it, if I don't know if Bloomberg can win like that though, is the problem. Like he has to be, you have to rile up your base, and if if the Democrat democratic side gets any kind of sense that they're friendly towards one another he's going to start losing support like oh you're not the fucking like you're in here equivocating and and playing nice that's not what we wanted so i don't know if uh i think he's the guy that could win the most but i don't think the democratic party can elect him because they're stupid yeah uh look with bloomberg he got destroyed last week that's what i'm interested in watching tonight if he can stand up for himself it's also going to be interesting that the focus is going to be shifted from bloomberg to Bernie Sanders tonight mm. and how hard people go all in. Cause you're right. Elizabeth Warren's not going to do that. No. Um, she'll probably rail against Bloomberg and uh, uh, stay kind of clear of the socialism talk, but we're at game time now. And 
these motherfuckers have to pick a side. Blood. This, this is my and, favorite. Uh, the the week before Super Tuesday is one of my favorites because everybody, same. everybody, it's like the time in the NFL game when all the trick plays come out. Yeah, yeah. Like all the information that their research teams have done over the past six months. Uh-huh. Like we're waiting for an like we, we've been sitting on this and now we're going to drop this bomb or that bomb. Uh, you can expect this debate to be very lively. Oh yeah, yeah, and fun. I, I think it's fun. Uh, like, honestly, for me, as someone who doesn't give a shit about either one of these uh, dumbass political parties, I would like to see two people who are otherwise friendly with one another get on stage and debate issues. Because, like, if you and I are debating something, I'm going to call you a fucking fat retard and an idiot sometimes. Yeah. But if you make a good point, I'm like, oh, that's a good point. You know what I mean? Yeah, that will so never happen in it. today's society. No, but that's got to be part of it. Like, you have to be able to fucking go hard after each other and then... Like, you have to have a short memory when it comes to debates yep. in that regard because ultimately the banter is just what makes it entertaining for the for the listener. But the information getting packed into that banter is you know, it's what we do for a living. Yeah. Like, we talk about buttholes for 45 minutes and then get somebody, then get a bill passed in Congress. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's part of what we do and it's part of political theater in general. It's It's a big part of it. Trump figured it out. That's why he got elected. It wasn't because of his resume or his credentials or any of that shit. It was because he figured out political theater. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know. I would love to see him and Bloomberg run against each other. It, the problem is, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, unless look, unless you they get to the convention and say, "Hey, man, we want somebody else in there, and we'll figure it out." If they get to a brokered convention and there's not a clear establishment candidate, Hillary Clinton will be that person. I promise you that. And maybe that's why, you know, I know we've had Milo and Alex Jones on, like, yeah. we were headed towards this anyways, and we'll see. Maybe that's why she's sitting out, because she's not, by the way, she's not endorsing anybody either. That would be the, the biggest mistake that the Democratic Party has ever made. Man, could you imagine? Because you the think... Democrats would re- revolt. You think Bernie's fans are mad after last time? Yeah. <laughs> after There's going to be a fucking riot. If he, if he doesn't get nominated this time... I promise you, Bernie fans are not coming out to vote. No. No, not at all. Not a chance, my man. And not I wouldn't either. No, me neither. Like, if you were uh, – that's like, would you go to the World Series if, you're, if your team got beat by the Astros, for example? No. I, and, and look, man, we're, and we're going to talk about this in Drinking Bro Sports right afterwards, but, uh, you know, they had their first spring training game and, and Altuve got beans. Like, it would be the same way where, fuck, man, if you screw with this once, right mm-hmm. – uh, like I, I'm, I'm pissed about it. But again, I give up, and I'm yeah. not going to fucking watch and or do anything related to whatever you fucked me over in. So uh, we'll find out. Uh, now's the time where we get to the drinking bro of the week. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to give this to the parents of um, the New Hanover County um, school district who went in and, and uh, fucking raised hell so that the superintendent got fired because. Or it res- allowed him to resign, I should say, because if you don't do this, I bet you they don't do anything. I, I bet you they do nothing about it at all. And that motherfucker's still in office. And uh, it, it was because you guys took the time and stormed it. Posters, signs. They had a 12 year old girl testify saying, Since when is it okay for a pedophile to be teaching at our school? Yeah. But our superintendent gets to keep his job if i were a pedophile at a, at a school i would not get to keep my job mm. um it was a very brave speech that she made and um i i think that was what ultimately made the biggest difference you know they held a meeting emergency meeting the next day and uh again i'm i'm, I'm sorry we couldn't run um it's strange uh i i I did enjoy meeting everyone and, and talking to each other about the, the political process and what goes on behind the curtain in these things. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I think the biggest learning lesson and takeaway for me was um, how filthy politics really is. Yeah. And, you know, I do see people that are working hard trying to make a difference who are running because it is extremely time consuming and you're doing all this other shit. And um, there is definitely something to be said about that. Because obviously you're doing it to try to help your community, uh, unless you're fucking Bill Rivenbark who's just doing it to help himself. Um, but you take in the, even in the case of like Bernie Sanders, right? I do not want a socialist president. I fucking don't agree with anything he says, nor do I think it will work. However, having gone through this process 
a little bit, just even for a few months and not even remotely near the scale of a Bernie Sanders. The fact that this old ass man is running twice through a fucking heart attack. Uh, clearly, he believes in something and this country. Um, if this got ripped away from him, knowing how much hard work goes into this again, just the nomination, man, that would be fucked because there is so much work that goes in it behind the scenes. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> You know, somebody could take it away for some dumb fucking reason. Um, and that goes on the local level. Uh, that goes on the state level. Like, it is pretty crazy, man. Uh, politics and stuff. Now, there is career politicians. And fuck, man, I was not aware that the superintendent makes $226,000 a year. That's his severance, by the way. That's that's excessive, Plus man. 30 grand for his, like, accrued time off. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of money. Um, but, uh, yeah. I man. feel like it would have cost less so his total payout, his quote unquote severance, ended up being a quarter million dollars. Yeah. So, like, you can't. There's no way the legal fees to fire him would have cost that much. It probably would have cost about fifty grand. Yeah. They would have saved two hundred thousand dollars, which again they could have <sighs> spent on buses, but whatever. Yeah. Fucking crazy, man. So, uh, anywho, um, <laughs> thanks for the support and everything. You know, we entered about a pocket, maybe ten grand, fifteen grand, or whatever it was, but it was worth it. Appreciate everybody who bought the shirts and everything that allowed us to pay for the buttons. And, uh, and signs and all that stuff. Um, but uh, I just I, I, I don't want to tell my children why dad is associated with a pedophile in every single fucking article that comes out. Um, especially when we had nothing to do with it. Um, but uh, look, I hope it gets cleaned up. In the next three to four years, we'll look at it again. But right now, uh, this, is, this is too hot. Um, for for D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This was an emergency drinking bros episode uh good night everyone stay tuned we got a million million awesome guests uh coming up for the next few weeks man and uh we're super fucking amped about it uh take care